What is going on guys? My name is Donovan and welcome to Tech Boosted. Today we are going to be talking about 3D printers, more specifically the Anet A8. Stay tuned and keep watching guys. So in this video, I'm just going to be walking you guys around my 3D printer, sharing my mods, my upgrades, the troubleshooting that I did, as well as my Cura settings. So feel free to skip around to whatever part of the video you'd like, and let's go ahead and move on over to the printer. So here is my printer, and we can go ahead and start with the filament holder. Now anything white has been upgraded with... Um, the white filament I'm using. And I'll leave links to all of the um, components that I purchased in the description. So to start off here is the um, filament holder. Now the one they sent was like a little plastic acrylic one and compared to the 3D printed one it was pretty weak. Um, so basically I took a drill and drilled holes into the back of the acrylic back here. You can see it all the way over here. And then there was a little spot to feed the nut and then the bolt. And then you just kind of tightened it down. And then you had to purchase um, a threaded rod. Um, and then that keeps it really secure so that the filament will just go straight down. And now this will fit two filament, um, two kilogram rolls of filament. And I'm sure you could probably fit three because they do have like a, a longer bolt. Now this bolt also here was 3D printed. And I'll leave the Thingiverse files in the description as well. Now we can kind of work our way down. And here is the filament guide on the extruder. Oh, didn't mean to touch the fan there. That. Um, the filament guide on the extruder so it goes straight into the little hole there. As well as the button um, to push the extruder in. So basically that's the filament switcher. You just push that down and pull the filament out. And then the next upgrade that I did was the, well these aren't really in order, but moving like kind of along in the 3D printer stance um, is this little ring, ring guy here. It's basically a cooling nozzle that allows the air to be blown in a 360 degree um, versus the like really cruddy one that they sent you um, So I just swapped that out and then I kind of liked the look of the cable chains So I kind of did some research on that finding the best best cable chain um, and this uh, Is the extruder cable chain and then here's the hotbed cable chain now I did have to sand some of the um, cable chain down on this side because when you move it back that far it hits the it hit the acrylic frame right here just a bit um, but I kind of fixed that by sanding it down and this was a pain in the butt to get on because I just didn't know when to feed the cables through and like this guy here I didn't realize that you had to put them through first so definitely read the description on the Thingiverse file for that and I didn't design any of these parts just yet, so I'm not trying to take credit for any of that. Then I printed the um, belt tightener and the belt tightener um, acrylic frame like safety thing. So on each of these, basically it protects the screws from digging into the acrylic frame. And then here is the like brace, the front brace. I haven't printed a back brace yet, but I may get to that in the future. Um, I believe that is all. I actually, we have these guys here too. And these are just some frame supports. They're like little T brackets. So that is all the 3D printed upgrades that I've done. Um, there's still a couple to come, like this guy here. Now this is the um, extruder belt. Um, like tightener on the back it just goes on the back of here and the belt gets fed like through this just to keep it nice and tight and then I also have the tightener that goes into here 
but I have to order a longer belt because I cut mine a little too short. So there was that. And now onto the actual just physical parts that I upgraded. Um, I got a new power supply to start out with because the cables down here, these guys, this cable, they were like all flipped so they didn't work in the one power supply that I had. Like the blue, the brown, and the yellow, they all didn't match up with what the picture said in the, um, the like tutorial. So I thought that I had a broken power supply but in reality the cable was the one that was like all messed up so definitely check your cables like using one of the um, multimeters before you plug everything in but um, this power supply is pretty nice it's the LRS 350 12 volt it's pretty good power supply haven't had any problems with it yet um, other than that basically you just follow the guide and it tells you everything you need to know the video there's uh, either YouTube videos that share um, like how to build it as well as like a PDF but the PDF I heard wasn't very clear I just used the videos okay so now we are going to talk about some troubleshooting so to start out um, here's what some of my prints look like initially there's brims in here as well but um, like there's just broken prints in here they were just bad they turned out like spaghetti and there's like shifting and all kinds of stuff so my first kind of tip for you guys is to definitely level your bed like at least three times before you even start printing so um if you get a really good level bed you can get prints that look like this now this also has to do with cure settings as well as temperatures but um prints like that and this they just turned out really nice like you can't even see anything that's really screwed up on them and prints like this as well so this is just a little fish guy kind of flops it's pretty neat now my next tip besides bed leveling is tighten your belts so initially you're gonna have pretty loose belts but you want to use like some needle nose pliers when first building and pull them really tight like it's probably a little bit better to have it a little bit over tightened than under tightened um, so like this belt is probably a little over tightened but the prints turn out a little bit better now this belt on the other hand is really loose and that's partially because that belt's really hard to tighten like you can't really pull it with the needle nose pliers very well so you just kinda stuck with a loose belt and I tried tightening it by taking off the motor and pulling that this way they just weren't working very well so that's why I kind of tighten this belt to make the x-axis look a little bit nicer and now I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this axis with this part here um, another strategy that people use going back to the bed leveling is to get a like piece of paper or I use um, a post-it um, a note card sorry I use a note card and slide it under and then I take my screwdriver loosen my little thumb screws here and then just kind of loosen that till I get it to where I want um, most of the people they usually kind of have the bed and the nozzle way too far from each other and once you kind of get your bed level and your belts tightened you're pretty much set um, you can adjust this guy over here to also help you level your bed it's just kind of the stop where it tells it to um, prevent it from going any further but yeah, once you get your bed leveled, like I was saying, um, just start printing the upgrades first. So I definitely start with either this guy or this guy first, so you get good prints, so that when you're printing other upgrades, the other upgrades turn out good. And then when you're finished with all your upgrades, go back and reprint these guys so that they're really good. That's just what I had to say for that. Um, and so basically, the order of prints that I do, I'd probably do the nozzle, then I would do the tighteners, these guys. And then, like, my last upgrades I would do would probably be, like, the aesthetic upgrades, like the belt um, cable chain. Um, I mean, it really, it kind of does help with it, but the print qualities aren't really going to improve too much from a cable chain. It looks pretty cool, though. Um, yeah, other than that, I'd also print this guy before you even print these, just so you can use the, the little cruddy acrylic stands and then put this on there. Okay, a couple other things I just want to talk about before 
anything else um, definitely make sure your electronics work before you start building it because like I said before my power supply I thought it was broken um, but in reality the cables were just mixed up so definitely make sure all that works um, and then here I'm just showing you guys my main board here I don't know necessarily uh, if you guys have the same exact one but they're pretty similar in terms of the new one versus the old one uh, I'm not really sure exactly what the difference is but I do know that this board here doesn't have the pins um, the like clip pins that you plug in it has uh, little screws that you screw the cables down on down at the bottom for the hotbed as well as the power in and another thing that you guys should probably do is definitely make sure um, you cable manage it's pretty difficult um, using this because there's just so many cables coming from all different directions but as you guys can see here I've got some zip ties and it looks pretty nice and it also will allow it to go up and down with this slack here I'm probably gonna print a cover box for this soon that will just kinda go over top of that and keep that nice and clean um, and then there's another picture of the power supply cables and I can try to get back here show you guys all the views because definitely when you're um, researching whether you want to buy this or not there's a lot of times like where you're trying to find the video that has like a picture of something that you guys need so if you have any of those questions just drop a comment and I may make a second video on like the upgrades because I definitely have more upgrades coming with that said one final tip is try to earn your money back using your 3d printer so for instance, I've already made all of my money back by selling like just little toys and fidgets things to my friends, like these plastic knuckles here. And so I'll just sell them for like five bucks or something. And like the first day I, I already got my money's back worth on the filament. Then I decided to buy some uh, a 30 box of bearings to make those little popular fidget spinners. And I made, I think like a hundred bucks or something and this printer is basically paid for because I only paid like 130 bucks I think it was for it and I bought it on Gearbest. Now if you do buy it on Gearbest definitely be warned the shipping was fairly slow on mine uh, they had some problems and I was hoping to get it before Christmas but it ended up getting it like way after Christmas um, I don't know what really went wrong. I just kept sending them emails. So I'm just like, please send me the printer. I don't really care. Um, and yeah, it just took a while. So kind of be warned if you're buying it from there and just be open to hoping that your printer comes. Um, but once it came here, it was pretty good shape. There was only one part that was cracked and that was on the little, again, the little plastic filament uh, acrylic holder where the initial roll could go. And it did come with the only kind of nice thing it did come with like a little thing of white filament not that I'm ever probably going to use this because it looks pretty cruddy but it's filament so you can get started um, also sorry going back to the tips and stuff make sure you change out the masking tape you definitely need masking tape to print on helps you take off your prints um, mine looks kind of messed up right now because I'm just trying to reuse the good parts of the so like I'll try to print right here because there's nothing that's really on here but I may not try to print here here or here because of the like holes and stuff but I try to reuse it because my trash can fills up pretty fast with masking tape okay so I know this video was fairly long but hopefully it kind of informed you guys um, I'll put the cure settings up right now so you guys can check those out Um, I'll also drop some links to some other nice videos that I used when I was first building my printer. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. I'm always open to answer anything. And if you guys have any concerns or other questions or just um, want me to post any other future video on this, um, just drop a comment like I said again. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.